that won't put him in a position where he's going to be financially secure, that won't help him quit his job at FedEx or whatever he's doing. Right. And again, I'm 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 extrapolating here. I don't know this man. But my point is to say, what if we took that same level of commitment, that same level of energy and put that into teaching our kids about economics? That's what I'm saying. What what if what if we said, OK, for every thousand hours you spend on the basketball court, you're going to spend a thousand hours in the in the gym getting ready for life. You, we're going to be except it's not a gym, it's a classroom. And we're going to spend that time learning everything there is to know about investing in wealth and economics. We're going to go every morning. Dr. Boyce is doing these things, these financial consciousness conversations every day. We're going to spend thousands of hours in, immersed in that because this guy is a professor of finance so he can tell us everything we need to know about economics and we're going to internalize as much of that as possible and then go learn from other people after we get done with dr boyce we're going to be just as serious about our economic future as we are about being good at basketball or being good at football or being good at twerking or whatever that has a much higher roi than the sports stuff, it just doesn't, sports does not have a good ROI. A few, a few people make it one out of every 10,000 or something, but, but mo for most people, it doesn't have an ROI. So, so why would we dedicate the best that our community has? Why would we give all of our resources, all of our wealth to invest in something that isn't giving us anything back? That does not make sense. Um, Just to finish that part of the conversation off, I can tell you, I loved sports. I would, you can, maybe you can tell I have broad shoulders. I'm, I was a strong athlete. I had lot. I had muscles. I, I was, I could sprint faster than every single player on the football team. I didn't play football, but all the players would come out for track practice. And I was captain of the track team and I raced all the players in a hundred meter dash the their fastest players. And I beat them all. I blew them away. And uh, they wanted me to play football. I just didn't, I didn't have the, I don't have the attention. And you know what, I, my ADHD, I, I couldn't focus long enough to learn the football plays. I would get bored in practice. That that was why I couldn't play football. Anyway, but, but so, so I love sports. I really, really did. I still love sports. And, and what I learned in college though, was I said, this isn't going to give any, give me anything long-term. However, the, the mindset that I developed as an athlete is what made me successful as a college student. It was literally taking it's like it's like in business. What they tell you to do in business is that if you have a if you're good at at one thing and that industry does not pay you or compensate you or give you a good ROI, what you should do is you should convert your resources into doing the thing that's going to pay you. So if you have a factory that makes chairs and no one is buying chairs, then you look you explore and say, "Okay, you know what? Maybe we can convert this factory to start making tires or something right we're gonna make we're gonna use the same engineer same expertise and and add a, a couple of things we're gonna retool thank you ac that's a great term we're gonna retool and and basically make the thing that's really gonna pay us as opposed to making the thing that isn't giving us anything so i think we got to retool we got to retool especially our black boys our black boys have to be retooled it, the same boy who is an excellent athlete who busts his butt at football practice who understands discipline, consistency, hard work, and teamwork, and everything required to succeed in sports, should be retooled to take that same mentality and use that in business, and use that in investing, and use that in economics. The only difference is that sports is typically not going to give him any financial return, whereas learning business and learning economics might save his life. It, it will literally uh, create a scenario where by the time he's 35, 40 years old, and he's thinking about grown man issues, he's trying to pay his bills, he's trying to figure out how to keep his family together, he's trying to make sure his kids are good, he'll have a far more options than the person who only invested in sports and never invested in anything else. So you got to ask yourself, what am I good at? And where do I spend my time? And that's where you go from level one to level two. So instead of talking about what you're going to do one day, I want to know what you're going to do today. What are you going to do today that's going to make you better at the thing that is going to eventually give you access to more resources for the people that you care about? That's an extremely important question for black people to ask because you're under so much of a threat. Capitalism really is a type of slavery. When people say capitalism is slavery, they're not being dramatic. They're absolutely correct. Capitalism is built on enslaving the most economically vulnerable in our society, uh, enslaving those who are the least economically conscious, uh, enslaving those who are uh, who are going to fall for the rope-a-dope. 
If you fall for the banana in the tailpipe and they can train you to become an addicted to consumption, they can and they and they they train you to become addicted to debt and they train you to have um instant gratification instead of long-term gratification, then you will effect effectively become a slave. The perfect capitalist slave is somebody who uh, loves to shop, who goes in debt so they can keep shopping, who uh, has a bunch of student loans that they can't pay, and who also has no other marketable skills outside of chasing jobs. That That's the perfect capitalist slave. That's That person's going to be locked in a job. They're not going to be able to do much of anything else because no one ever really sat there and talked to them about expanding their skill set to make sure that they could get what they need. So that's my goal. <clears throat> that's my job is to sort of explain these things to you and then give you some options and solutions that will help you get there. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I talk to you guys every day. All right, so speaking of that, I should be done now. I've been talking for an hour. Uh, uh, if you want to get the notification and the the, um, the uh, reminders in the mornings uh, periodically to join us for Money in the Morning, we do this every day at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, just text the word MORNING to 87948. Pull out your phone, text the word MORNING to 87948. Also, <clears throat> the Stock Options Summit is in Los Angeles on the 19th. If you'd like to join us in LA, just go to stockoptionssummit.com. Uh, tonight, for those of you that are coming to the summit at six at 7 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to do a uh, sort of get ready session with you guys on how you can network and really benefit from uh, from the summit. If you can't make it to the summit and you just want to learn stock options, I do have a stock options masterclass that's available. You can go to stockoptionsmasterclass.com. Uh, that's stockoptionsmasterclass.com. So feel free uh, to go take a look at that. All right. So anyway, I'm out of here. I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, Mar Marcia says, what's the fourth step to building wealth? The fourth step is protecting your resources, protecting your wealth. So the three steps, uh, the, so so just to summarize that for Marcia, because Marcia, you, you know me, and I hope you can forgive me for my ADHD driving me in different tangents. But I do stream of consciousness, and I, I think it's pretty good. I think this is a great way for us to learn without making it so formal. It doesn't have to be a class. Sometimes just lots of conversations can help you uh, connect to, on an emotional level, sort of what the, the key ideas are. And that's what I do. I just come in. I, my goal is to talk to you and just talk to you about your economics. That, that's what we do every morning. So here are the four steps, four steps to building wealth. Number one, become financially conscious. Uh, most people uh, that, that want, a lot of people that want wealth don't even know where the money is. They don't know how money works. They never spend time studying money, learning about money. You're never going to master something that you don't understand. Uh, um, the second step is make a plan. A lot of people might know what to do, but they don't make a plan to do it. Uh,